I, th I'm thankful that when God gives us a test in life, he gives us the answers. And here he's telling you, if you want to get ready for the afterlife, if you want to get ready for the day that I come uh, once again, this is what you need to do to prepare for it. Now, let me say this very, very uh, boldly right now. This church believes in the afterlife. We don't believe that you just live 60, 70, and 80 years. You go to sleep and you die and that's it. No. Everything we do in this place is in preparation because one day there's a place called heaven and there's a God's family and everything we do here on earth is preparation for God's family forever. You might live here 70, 80 years, but this is nursery compared to eternity, compared to forever. And everything we do here is preparing us to that place. Your worship, your praise, your giving, your management with time, with your talent, with what you have. It's all in preparation so the place where we're at. And so here Jesus gives us an example. He says, if you want to know heaven better, if you want to know the afterlife better, listen to this story. And the story that he gives us, he te tells us, he says, he says, there was a man, a master. You can guess who the master is. It's Jesus. It's God. And he says, to one he gave five talents. To others he gave two. And another he gave one. I want you to notice one thing, that when God gives something, he gives something to everybody. God gives something to everybody. Now, be careful, because you don't want to get into the spirit of comparing. Well, why does she have two, and why does he get five, and I get one? Don't, don't start comparing. All that's going to do is going to give you a spirit of self-pity, and all you're going to look at what's missing in your life. I understand one thing, that all you need is one, one God in your life. All you need is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's all you need in your life. Somebody give God praise. I feel like preaching right now to a person that might say, you only have one. I'll never forget, uh, my wife's not here, but I'll never forget uh, shopping at the mall. And Well, she did shopping. I do walking around and I do eating. Well, I go looking for samples. And uh, I went to Mrs. Fields and they were giving the free uh, cookies. And I said, oh, Lord, uh, I'll get a sample. They don't give you the cookie. They give you a crumb. But I took the crumb. And I, I got the piece of crumb and it tastes so good. I said, oh, that's really good. I said, uh... Uh, uh, how much is the cookie? They said, it's $5. Uh, I said, how much is the crumb? <laughs> and I said, I said, uh, oh, that, and that cookie looked, it tasted good. They had me. And I said, man, if I go back and I told my wife I got a $5 cookie, I'm going to need a lot of prayer and help because she's going to talk to me about being a good steward. And uh, I'm staring at the cookie. And I'm saying, well, do you have any specials? Yeah, you have to buy two cookies to get the third cookie free. Oh, that's $10 cookies now. And I, I'm thinking, well, that's not going to work. And I thought, well, uh, okay. Well, uh, after five minutes of thinking about it and praying about it, I'm walking away with a cookie. <laughs> now, I didn't buy the milk. I just got the free water. I figured that was saving some money. And I was walking, and I go, and I, 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 I have my cookie, and I go find my wife. And she said, oh, uh, where'd you get that cookie? I said, Mrs. Fields. And then she said, she said, oh, how much was it? It was like $5. <laughs> She's thinking like, well, now I can go get myself some shoes or something. He's going to spend $5 on cookies. I started eating that cookie, and God spoke to me. You're thinking for $5, God better do something to you. And so I was eating the cookie, and God spoke to me. And I really believe it was God because I saw, uh, I saw Mrs. Fields and I saw, I don't know what she looked like, but I, I, I saw the idea of Mrs. Fields and I saw her in a, uh, uh, a kitchen and I saw her with a lot of bills in front of her and I saw her husband sitting at the table and just saying, uh, uh, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how we're going to pay these bills. We cannot make it. We cannot do it. And so... Uh, she, uh, I saw this. I, I did. You're thinking, boy, that's, that was, there was something else in that cookie if you're looking at all that. But I saw it. And I saw Mrs. Phil say, well, uh, I, I could probably help out. And the, the husband said, how could you help out? There's too much of a need. There's so much that we have to pay. How in the world could you do it? What would you be good at? And I imagine Mrs. Phil saying, well, I'm good at making cookies. And she began to make cookies. And out of her cookies, they were blessed. I'm telling you, I felt God speak to me. Because later on, thank God for Google or Wikipedia, I went and checked out 
Mrs. Fields. And if you go check out her story, she was in East Palo Alto, which is one of the poorest areas in uh, the Bay Area back when she was there. And she was there, and, uh, and her story says she came from humble be beginnings. I'm telling you, God spoke to me. You see, what do you have to tell me with this? Brother Dan, it's because you never know how you can have one gift, and God can use that one gift for his honor and for his glory. You might say, what in the world could baking do? What in the world could cooking do? You can use it for God's honor and for God's glory. And when you mix God's blessing and when you put God's anointing, God begins to open up doors that no man can shut. And God begins to close doors that no man can open. I'm trying to tell you that whatever gift and talent you have, when you put it in God's hands, it's unlimited. Nobody can stop it. I wish somebody would get excited. God can use you. God can use you. You might say, well, all I'm good is talking. Well, open up your mouth and shout the name of Jesus because God wants to use your one. God wants to use your two. God wants to use your five. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. It's exciting. Now, some of you have been in church for a long time. You know God can use it. God can use tamales to build a church. God can use enchiladas to build a ministry. God can use whatever gift you have in your hand so that he can multiply it. Is there somebody in this place? You might say, all I'm good is at social media. Well, praise God. You're our new public relations director of the Clovis Church. Go and tell somebody, look what the Lord has done. Look how the Lord is blessing. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. God gives everybody a talent. God gives everybody something. Now use it. For his glory, somebody give God praise. In the scripture that we read, it's important that we see that everything, everything uh, that we have belongs to God. Everything that we have belongs to God. I know you own keys to that car. I know you have uh, the mortgage to that, to that home. But... It, Everything you have belongs to God. God loans what you have. He loans it for 60, 50, 70 years. Tomorrow's not promised, but everything we have is loaned for you. Uh, you know, I, I've been around people, and I've prayed for them, and I've seen that God heals them. And I'll go up to them afterwards because I recognize that cancer had ravaged their body, that, that, that they were going through uh, issues with, with, uh, with their body. And I'll go back to them because I'm hoping they're going to say, it's by the grace of God. And I'll say, how are you? doing? They'll say, I'm great. And I'll say, what's your secret of being so healthy? And they'll say something like, you know what? It's broccoli. Or they'll say, like, oh, Brother Dan, I go walking 10,000 steps and you're healthy. Or others tell me, well, an apple a day and uh, it keeps the doctor away. And you know what? I tell them, the broccoli is amazing. The walking is good for you. Please do it. But everything you are, everything you can be, everything that God allows you to be, it's all for the honor and for the glory of God. We are in God's hands. God gives us life every single day, and you have to make a choice what you're going to do with that life. Uh, do you have breath in your lungs? Uh, then give God praise. Do you have blood in your veins? Then give God glory. Everything you have belongs to God. I know there's somebody here that says, well, Brother Dan, I went to college. Yes, you learned. Well, I, 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 I did what I needed to stay healthy. Yes, you grew. But it was only God that gave you the opportunities. It was only God that gave you the wisdom. It was only God. Don't you dare say that it was luck, that it was fortune, that it was opportunity. No, it was Jesus Christ, and it's because of him that we are here. Is there somebody that can take a moment and say, I couldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for the love of God, if it wasn't for the power of God. Somebody use these hands that God gave you. Somebody lift up this voice that God gave you, all for the honor, all for the glory glory of God. Everything we have belongs to God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Second thing I want to tell you when I'm reading this scripture, it says that God has given us all a set of talents. God has given us all something that we could. I want to tell you something. If you're, if you're ever a, uh, uh, eavesdropping on the Velasquez house, there's some phrases we use a lot. 
One of the phrases that we hear a lot in the Velasquez house when somebody is upset about something that they heard, we always say, consider the source, consider the source. Where did it come from? If that person's angry, mean, or just being ugly, they don't deserve to ruin your day. Consider the source. But, uh, one of the other phrases that just bothers people in my home, I'll say, you know what? Because they'll be having a bad day. I'll say, uh, no matter how bad it is, you're living somebody else's dream life. <laughs> uh, they don't like to hear that. <laughs> but the other thing that we tell them is, out of all the families that you could have been born in, you had no choice. God chose this family for you. And we, uh, we tell our kids, and the gifts that you have and the talents you have, you had no choice. God chose those gifts and talents for you. You didn't choose those natural abilities. You didn't choose those natural talents. God chose them for you. Now you have to make a choice. Will you use them for the honor and glory of God? Can I preach? Because sometimes when it comes to God, we get this attitude. Well, if God has everything mapped out, if, every, if God has everything preordained and predestined, then why should I even do anything? I'm going to live my life on cruise control and just let God do something. No, that's wrong. Because you've got to recognize that God's plan for your life is there for you. But God's plans are not automatic. They don't just happen. God told his, his children of Israel, you ready? You've been, you've been, uh, you've been uh, aliens and you've been uh, uh, strangers and foreigners and you've been slaves. All right, you want your own land? Yes. It's going to be a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. There's going to be riches there. Yes. It's going to be a fertile valley. Yes. Now you're going to go have to fight and kill giants. No. <laughs> but was it, was it God's will? Yes. Then go fight for it. No. You're going to be a doctor one day. You're going to have a master's degree. Yes! You're going to have to study. You're going to have to be diligent. You're going to have to be careful with your time. Why? Because a great God is going to do a great thing when you humble yourself, dedicate yourself. Somebody give God praise. God's promises are there for you, but they're not automatic. You still have to wake up in the morning. <laughs> you still have to get down on your knees and pray. You still have to seek God's direction. I wish that there was somebody in this place that when you walk out tomorrow out of this place and you say, God, give me my next step. God, give me my next place. The steps of a good man are ordered, and they're ordered by the Lord. Do I turn left? Do I turn right? Do I go straight? Do I stop? God, I'm in your hands. I'm in your control. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. I truly believe that the, I truly believe that God has blessings. It's almost like a cloud. Sorry, that's not a good word with all of this smoke, but it's like a cloud. And God wants to rain down blessings. And there you are walking. You know what? Let me tell you something about the enemy. Hell doesn't know what uh, God has promised you. Hell doesn't know what God's going to do in your life. If hell knew what was going to happen in the future, they would, have ne they would have never crucified Jesus because it was the greatest mistake hell ever did. But you know what hell knows? Hell sees angels. Hell sees Jesus. Hell sees anointing. And wherever there's anointing, hell wants to distract. Hell wants to bring doubt. Hell wants to bring discouragement, but I rebuke hell, and I lift up heaven, and I give God glory, and I give God praise. Somebody bless the name of Jesus right now. Why is pastor so excited? He hasn't preached in two weeks. I just feel like preaching right now. I feel like somebody just needs to be moved in their spirit because you've had all these excuses why you can't, why you won't. But I'm trying to tell you that, yes, you will. By the power and the anointing of God, God's going to raise you up. God's going to pick you up. You're going to open up your mouth, and you're going to declare what thus saith the Lord. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up the name of the Lord. I believe it. Somebody praise God. One of them, the master gave five. He began to work. Someone else had two. He began to work. But the one that had one, you know what he did? He began to work. But his work was 
meaningless. It was counterproductive. He went and got a shovel while the other ones were working to be productive. The one was, product, was being uh, uh, ineffective but doing work because shoveling takes work. I'm going to put it in here. Oh, I'm not going to mess this up. I'm going to bury it, put it down. Can I preach to you? Whenever you're running away from God's calling, it takes work. <laughs> Why? Because you can't outrun the hand of God. You can't fight God. His arms are too long. His hand is too big. And his purpose in your life is too great. I'm going to say this with all due respect. I won't mention his name, but I'll never forget something that just uh, uh, breaks my spirit. I'll say this much. I'll never forget being in Modesto, California, in the hospital there. And I went to go pray with my uncle. And I'll never forget, as we walked there, and if I mentioned the man's name, uh, people from a certain organization, you would recognize that last name. And uh, I'll never forget, the elderly man looked at my uncle, and he said, John, whatever you do, don't ever say no to God. He said, I ran away from God's calling. And now it's too late. God had called me to minister. God had called me to speak his word. And I ran away from it. He said, John, don't you ever do that. And I'll never forget, he died moments later with regrets, with question marks. Why? When you have all the strength, when you have all the energy, when you have all of God's blessings, stop looking at what's missing. There's never going to be a perfect situation. Some people say, well, when I get a million dollars, then I'm going to give $100,000 back to God. But God's giving you 10. What are you doing with the one? God's giving you 100. What are you doing with the 10? It, you give what you have, and you give where you're at. You say, well, I'm going to wait till I have the wisdom of Solomon. Why are you going to wait till you have the wisdom of Solomon? You have some good sense right now. And let God begin move you. Some say, well, I'll help in the church when I get the strength of Samson. Why do you want to be Samson when God has got a, something inside of you? The Bible says greater things you shall do than what Jesus did in the Bible. I'm trying to tell you, there's never a perfect situation. But when you're in the hands of God, God can do his perfect will in your life. Somebody give God glory. I, I want to honor Sister Martha because today when she's baptized, she was able to fight the lie of the enemy that says, well, when, until you get everything right, then you can get baptized. Well, until everything is perfect in your life, then you can give your life to God. Can I tell you, that will never happen. You'll never get to that place. Why? Because unless you have God's supernatural power, you're just on human wheel. You'll never get to do things right. That's why you need a Savior. That's why you need Jesus. And so today when we baptize Sister Martha, she's saying, God, not my will, but thy will. Today when we baptize her, she's going to say, God, you're going to do your perfect work in my life. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says that the one that had one talent, he buried. You know when I hear that, you know what that means to me? That you try to put God's calling, God's gifts, in a place where you don't even want to look at it. You want to forget it. You don't want to see it's there. You know what bothers me so much? is that we can bury the things that God gives us. But we allow the enemy to get the spiritual shovel and always put our past in front, and we let him just keep it there. I rebuke hell, and I shut the mouth of the enemy. The enemy deserves to be captive. And you know what should be free? God's gift inside of us. Somebody says, well, Brother Velasquez, I can't. No, 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 of course you can't. That's what God's looking for is people that say, I can't. So that it's not you, it's him. But the Bible says, open up your mouth, and I will fill you. And out of your bellies will flow out rivers of living water. I pray there's somebody in this place that say, I can't. But God, you can. And this is your life. And what? Whatever you want to do, these are the hands that you will use. This is the mouth that you will use to show the world that you love them. Somebody give God praise. 
I'm getting excited right now. I'm getting excited because someone's saying, God, I'm tired of not doing nothing. I'm ready to do something great for God. I feel like there's somebody going to come to me after church. You're going to call me and say, Brother Velasquez, this is what's missing. This is what we're not doing. And we're going to say, all right, get, let's get ready. Let's get it going. Why? Because God, a great God's going to do a great work in your life. I feel it. I'm excited. What is it that you can give? What is it you can do that God wants to multiply in your life? I believe instead of bearing the gifts, release them and use them. You see, the Bible says God would rather you risk and fail than not do nothing at all. You don't believe me? The Bible says God is a rewarder of them that seek him, that move, that are active. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith isn't a statue. Faith is activity. Faith is movement. Faith isn't just a memorial. Faith is something that has life in it. Faith has activity in it. Faith has movement. I wish somebody would give God some, uh, some faith praise right now. I wish somebody would give some God some living praise right now. I wish something would get inside of you and say, I'm tired of not doing something. God has put something inside of me, and I'm going to use it for his honor and I'm going to use it for his glory. God's not done with me. Somebody give God praise. I'm excited right now. I'm excited because I'm looking at you and you are the hands of God. I'm excited for the city of Clovis. I just saw that Clovis is one of the, the fastest growing cities in the state of California by percentage. You know why that excites me? Uh, 83,000 new people came to the city of, of Clovis, or not 83,000, uh, uh, 23,000 came to the city of Clovis in the last 10 years. That excites me because those are people that haven't heard of Jesus. Those are people that might be looking for a church, and I'm looking at the ambassadors. I'm looking at the people that are going to say, hey, why don't you try Jesus? Come on and let's bless the Lord. God is doing something great. God is doing something new. Somebody get excited. And if God can do it for Clovis, God can do it for Fresno, God can do it for Sanger, God can do it for Tulare, God can do it for Dinuba. Somebody give God praise for what he's doing. Be careful. There's some people who say, well, if only I had the two, if only I had the five. Don't compare. Use what you have. I'll tell you as a preacher, some people come up to me and they say, man, did you hear that preacher? That's amazing. That's awesome. That's great. You should start preaching like him. I can't preach like him. I tell people I don't even think like him. <laughs> we have to use the gift that we've got. And when we use the gift that we've got, God puts his power and his anointing and it's unlimited in the hands of God. I remember they used to joke at, at me. My wife, I just saw my wife. Well, I might, I'll say something that's going to get me in trouble. But they used to joke at me because my wife's favorite preacher was Brother Jeff Arno, amazing preacher. So when we were uh, dating, the, the guys would come, they say, hey, we heard Judy's favorite preacher is Jeff Arno. And you're not even her favorite preacher. And I said, well, I'm, I'm not even my own favorite preacher. <laughs> but you know, I'll never forget what I learned. I learned that when I would go to the hospitals and I would pray for the sick, I suddenly became somebody's favorite preacher. Well, I learned that whenever I'd go to the uh, convalescent homes and the retirement homes, they, couldn't, they, they could care less about the other preacher. They wanted to hear what I was going to preach. And I felt great. They were excited. They said, oh, we love your, your preaching. Why? Because it's your gift, and you're using it, and you're doing something. Let me tell you, there's somebody that needs your gift, and whatever you have, if you want to sing a song, find a crowd to go sing it to, because it's going to bless them, and it's going to honor them. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Can I preach just a little bit more? Can I preach just a little bit more? He buried it. it they went to the, they went to the, uh, the master. Master said, I like the, the scripture. It says, 
to, to uh, it was for reckoning, for accountability. In Spanish, they'd say, para sacar cuentas. They're going to figure things out. The five, he multiplied five. There you go. There's ten. The two multiplied four. But the one, he said, well, uh, what do you say? I'm concerned because I'm concerned that somebody in this place, if you were the one and you're not using your talent, this is what you might say. Well, God, um, I was worried about what people were going to think. So I'd rather not do anything. Can I tell you, people are always going to talk about you. They might as well talk about the good things that you're doing. Well, God, I, I was afraid that uh, I was going to fail. So I rather did nothing. Can I tell you, when you serve a God, even when you fail, the Bible says God can turn things around for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I joke around because I think about some of my first preachings ever. And boy, they just, they didn't turn out very good. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I didn't stop preaching. I've heard singers that are amazing now, and I remember them as young people starting out. They weren't there. But the more you practice, the more you work it, it's a gift. He went to the master and he told the master, here it is. I buried it and I gave it to you. Do you know what the master said? This is something that some of you aren't going to like, but it's in the Bible. The master said this. He said, take away from the one that didn't use anything and give it to the ones that have it. Some of you have a problem with that because we want equality, but this is spiritual. It has nothing to do with government. It has nothing to do with money or rights. It has to do with the spiritual things. Jesus said, or the master said, take away from the one that didn't use it and give it to the ones that are using it. Give them more. I've, I've preached that before, and people have come and bothered by that because they didn't like what we were preaching, but that was in the word of God. But I've taught them that it's a universal law, that anything that you don't use, you lose. Anything you don't use, you lose. If you don't move, if you don't work out your muscle, you lose your muscle. It, that, that's a universal law. If you don't use your mind, your mind begins dull and you lose your sharpness because anything that you don't use, you lose. Can I preach that? It's natural. It, it, any talent that you don't take time to practice, I don't know why I'm playing the organ here, <laughs> the air organ, but any, any uh, talent that you, you're good at and you don't practice, you forget and you lose. It's a universal law that what you don't use, you will lose. But here God is saying that what you're willing to use, I will bless you with more of. Can I preach? Is there anybody here that needs something? You need more energy? You need more talents? I'll say it. You need more finances? Well, I'll give you the secret to success. The Bible says all you have to do is use it. Use what you have and you're going to get more. Use what you have and you're going to get more. Use what you have and you're going to get more. Give to the poor and see that God will give to you. Give of your talent and see that God will open up doors. 
You have to pardon me. But I'm of the belief that God will always make room for your gift and your talent. You don't have to go and ask for it. You don't have to go try to tell people to put you in the place. You don't have to try to scheme your way up to the platform. God, your talent and your gifting will make room for you. And if it hasn't made room for you, that wasn't the place for you. But you keep using your talent. You keep using your gifting. And your gifting will make its own platform. You don't have to go seek a place. You don't have to seek a spotlight. Because God's light is on your life. Can somebody give God glory? Can somebody give God praise? Use it. Use it. Use it. Musicians, please. I want you to notice to the five, he was able to multiply it. To the two, they were able to multiply it to two. To four. Wonderful. There's growth. But I want you to notice this phrase. And I pray that you would underline it in your Bible or write it in one of your notes. Because I truly believe it. He says, Thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy or the master's happiness. I get it. There's people that come up to me and just say, well, Brother Dan, I'm just, I'm just not happy. I just, I just don't feel that joy. And my ears always have a way of perking up when I hear that because it's biblical. That if you're not using your gifting that God gave you, if you're not using the talent that God gave you, something is not fulfilled but when you begin to serve and to work what God's given you the Bible says you enter the joy of the kingdom I don't know who it is today but you're going to walk out with some joy because you're ready to serve to move you know C.S. Lewis said this he said, if nothing in this world can satisfy your soul, then maybe you weren't made for this world. Do you recognize that? You have a hole in your heart that only God can feel and the purpose of God can feel. And you're expecting your husband to feel. And that's wonderful. You went on your honeymoon or you, you're having a great relationship, but he's not going to be able to fulfill everything. There's some husbands mad at me right now. Your wife, as beautiful and as loving and a great cook that she is, there's some God-sized voids that, that won't be able to be filled unless God's purpose is there. You need God. You're, gonna, you're getting frustrated at each other. You're yelling and you're angry. And it's not the kid's fault. It's not your fault. It's not your bank account's fault. It's that if nothing in this world can satisfy you, it's because you weren't made for this world. I don't know how to tell you, but you're not a citizen of Clovis. You're not a citizen of the United States. When you give your life to God, you are a citizen of heaven, and you belong to King Jesus. Can I get excited that today, Sister Martha is going to change her residency? <laughs> And she's going to say, I don't belong to earth anymore. I belong to Jesus. There's a, there's a scripture that, that scares people. Sister Jackson, the scripture says that in that day, there's going to be a separating of the, the goats and the lambs. The goats that wanted to do things their own way but the sheep that know their shepherd. And I've seen people when we do Bible studies on that scripture and they get all nervous like, well, oh, okay. Like if they, they, you could, they've told me, they imagine themselves in a line in heaven and like, okay, oh Lord, what am I going to be? Am I on team sheep or am I on team goat? Uh, which one, left or right? It doesn't work like that. It's already settled. 
You know what team you're on. Your heart knows what, you're, what team you're on because you give your love to that. You give your time to that. Where your treasure is at, that's where your heart will be also. And so today, as we're getting faith for our future, God told me to tell you, use what you have. I know people that are sick. They still, every, every, uh, every morning, they have a Facebook message to give God all the honor and the glory. Look what the Lord is doing. I know people that maybe aren't good at, at uh, speaking in a crowd, but you get them one-on-one, -on -one, they know how to invite people to church. Whatever you have, you use it for the glory of the Lord. You use it for the glory of the Lord. Would you stand? Somebody give the Lord praise right now. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. Uh, I'll never forget being in, in Compton, California. And I don't have to do this anymore because I'm not an evangelist. But uh, back then, it was no big deal to preach three services. And I'll never forget, I had preached my third service in Compton. And the pastor said, wherever you want to go, Brother Velasquez, we'll take you to eat. And I said, well, we're in Compton, and I love barbecue. And so I said, find me some good barbecue. And so that, that was, uh, we got in the car. I was on my way, and uh, we were driving. I was exhausted. I was tired. And I'll never forget, uh, as we're driving, the, the driver's driving, and they drive me into another church. And I said, oh, Lord, they're going to make me preach again. And I remember having my Bible and just kind of thumbing through it. I said, God, you got to give me a word. I was going to preach on being tired. <laughs> I don't know, and being hungry. But uh, I was thumbing through my Bible, and we got to the church, and they said, we're here. I was like, oh, okay, good. That's wonderful. And so I, I um, <clears throat> got my Bible, and they said, oh, you don't need your Bible? I said, oh, I don't have to preach again? Said, no, no, no. We're going to get you to eat some food. They said, we brought you to the best barbecue in all of Compton. And they took me to the, the back, to the kitchen. And it looked like they had just had service. And so there I am, and I'm ready. And I was like, oh, Lord. And, uh, and they said, whatever you want, Brother Velasquez, the ribs are amazing. I said, give me whatever you can. And so I'm ordering the ribs, and there's a mother uh, sitting over there. And I didn't understand what she said, but she's talking to me, and she's telling me something. And, and uh, uh, the young lady said, you, uh, the mother's talking to you. I said, yes, mother. And she said, she said something. She said, she's telling you that those, uh, th those ribs are a blessing. And I said, oh, yes, and they're going to bless me right now. I said, <laughs> and, and then she said it again. They're a blessing. They're a blessing. I said, yes, yes. And then she said, the reason why she's telling you that those ribs are a blessing is she said, because those are ribs are her recipe. And she used them to build this church. Church fit about 900 people. I said, wow, that's awesome. She said, those ribs are blessed. I said, I I'm going to have double because <laughs> I need a double blessing. And she said something. And then she said, do you understand? And I'm smiling, but I couldn't understand what she was telling me. And I said, I don't understand. And she got up, and she, she had to struggle with her walk. But she walked up, and she said, I said those ribs are a blessing. And she pointed at a bunch of boys. And then the, the young girl, she said, those are her grandkids. Those are her grandkids. And with those ribs, she built this church so that those grandkids wouldn't be in the gangs and they wouldn't be in the streets. Now they're part of the church. Those ribs are a blessing. I'm trying to tell you, if you could use what God gives you, and what God puts in your hands, you don't have to take what hell gives you. You can lift your eyes and say, God, you've meant something uh, greater. And what hell means for evil, God, you could turn it around for good. And there's somebody right now fighting me saying, well, you don't know my situation. And you don't know how bad it is. And I'm telling you with the love that I have and as your pastor, it's never too late to do the right thing. God can always open up doors and God can change things. Somebody give God glory. 
Last Sunday, we saw one of the greatest miracles that in the middle of COVID in San Diego County, Sister Fernandez was able to have her, uh, her father baptized in the name of Jesus. And now he's in the hands of God. Look what God can do. It's never too late to do the right thing. And so today, this altar is open for somebody who says, God, whatever you've given me, five talents, two talents, or one talent, I'm going to stop looking at what's missing, and I'm going to realize what I have. And if I have you, I have everything I need. Can somebody give God glory? Can somebody give God praise? Some of the younger couples and the younger people won't understand this. But the greatest mark of maturity in your life is when you stop thinking about yourself and when you start thinking about others. Some people, they don't flip that switch till they're older. Some of them get it young. Two weeks ago, we just had an event. It was called Imagine a Book. And there was a young lady that started an organization called Reading Heart. And in elementary or, or uh, in intermediate, she thought, wouldn't it be great if I could just get people to read books? Now she's no known all over the state of California for what she is doing. She just graduated from high school. Can you imagine? In junior high, she started this nonprofit that is now known throughout the state. And you say, wow, that's great. That's wonderful. No, that was somebody that stopped thinking about themselves and they started thinking about how can I help others? The mark of maturity is when you recognize that I'm not here for myself. I'm here for a greater calling. And how can I bless you? How can I bless others? How can I help somebody else? How can I make a difference? You see, my friend, you have talents, but you can waste them on yourself. You could spend them on life or you can invest them on others. When you invest them on others, it'll be a gift that will continue even when you're not here anymore. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. This altar and this prayer is for somebody who says, God, I choose you. <laughs>